Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates in regards to Sagittarius A star, the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy. But to be more exact, we're actually just going to focus on that famous image. The image published by the Event Horizon Telescope team approximately two years ago. And this was of course the first ever image of the central black hole. Although the first version looked like this. And here this is a comparison between Sagittarius A star and the black hole inside M87. But eventually, by combining the image with the polarization data, astronomers were able to recreate a signature of magnetic fields that essentially was visualized this way. And so here these unusual lines represent the magnetic field around the shadow of the black hole. But when we've discussed this image originally, there was one thing that I kind of tried to highlight. All of this is basically just a recreation. In other words, this is technically what we think it might look like based on what we know about black holes and based on somewhat limited observations from the Event Horizon Telescope combined with statistical interpretation. Specifically, the scientists use something known as PSF, Point Spread Function. And so in essence, this function was supposed to fill in the blanks from things we could not see, simply because the Event Horizon Telescope is basically just these telescopes combined into one large dish. The dish that becomes size of planet Earth. But it's basically a dish that only contains these points, nothing else. And as a result, everything in between has to be filled in with statistical analysis. And actually one of the most recent images looks like this. Here this combined the observations in 345 GHz, which allows scientists to create an even sharper image, but more importantly, allow them to create something that appears basically in color. Although here each color represents a type of a radio frequency. So this is not optical light, all of this is just radio light. And despite the achievements here, and obviously despite the fact that this looks super cool, naturally not all researchers agreed with this interpretation, mostly because some scientists believe that the actual statistical analysis used might have created certain artifacts and might not be showing us the true picture. And approximately a year ago, back in 2023, we've discussed one of the reinterpretations by a Japanese team from the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. In this case, their interpretation was entirely different. And the images looked nothing alike. And you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And while well, this team now decided to apply a somewhat similar reanalysis to all of the data from M87 as well. And as you can imagine, their results did not look like this at all. And as a matter of fact, let me show you first what they've discovered. Their image looks like this. And that's because here they used a different mapping method in order to fill in those gaps that were not visible to the Event Horizon Telescope. And so instead of using point spread function, which they actually believe resulted in the circular ring-like image that we observed in the original image, instead they used the knowledge from the general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic simulation along with the clean algorithm to basically create something like this. And here they do provide very specific reasons for why they believe previous image was maybe incorrect. They actually make a very strong argument for why PSF used in previous research produces a lot of artifacts which create this unusual circular shape naturally. So it potentially doesn't actually exist. And instead their observations suggest some kind of an elongated structure and not a circular shape with a very bright east side and somewhat dark west side, which basically suggests that the disk is spinning really fast, possibly about 60% the speed of light, with the east side in this case moving toward us. And so this accretion disk is visible in their image and is spinning around the central black hole approximately 4 million solar masses in mass, producing all of this light as a result of friction. But a lot of factors affect the shape of this disk, including the spin of the black hole, and the interaction of material around the disk itself. On top of this, the gravitational pull from the central black hole also distorts the image we're observing, and so all this potentially stretches everything, creating a kind of an elongated shape, but also makes this much more difficult to image. And that's because no telescope right now can create a perfect astronomical image of anything that far away, especially when it comes to interferometry. These telescopes will always have a lot of gaps in between them, and filling these gaps can be very challenging. And so the team from Japan interprets everything this way. But technically, both teams are probably somewhat incorrect. 
and that's actually what the authors admit themselves. These are all interpretations based on what we know and based on statistical analysis we're using here, but these are not physical images of what's actually happening around the black hole. In other words, because of these gaps and because it's hard to fill them, we're unlikely to get a more perfect image anytime soon. But their image might be a little bit more accurate than this one, because as we've discussed a couple of years ago, there are quite a few things here that were basically kind of taken for granted, or in some sense, a lot of the data coming from EHT was actually combined to create a kind of a averaged out image, and so it's actually not showing us a one frame, it's showing us all of the frames together, basically creating a kind of a blurry image of what the scientists believed black hole might look like. Here though, the approach was just a little bit different. The focus here was on discovering the Doppler boost, which is visible as one side being brighter than the other side, and also potentially discovering the actual location of the black hole. You can sort of see it right there. And obviously it doesn't look as impressive as the image by the Event Horizon team. In reality, this could be just a little bit more accurate. And if so, it basically shows us a portion of the disk that seems to be a few Schwarzschild radii away from the black hole, spinning extremely fast, approximately 180,000 kilometers per second. But it's also viewed at a certain angle, most likely about 45 degrees. So we're not actually looking at the edge of the black hole, neither are we looking at the face of the black hole. Here this is under a 45 degree angle. And so this reanalysis definitely shows us a slightly better image of what the accretion disk might really look like. But this is naturally not the end. Even the Event Horizon team is still actually trying to collect more data, and is trying to create an even better image, but in their case they're still using that previous model, or PSF, that statistical tool that was used to fill the gaps previously. And so if the scientists in this paper are actually correct, maybe that's not the best tool to use, just because of those artifacts that it tends to produce. Nevertheless, by using additional telescopes and by observing black holes for even longer, they're actually hoping to recreate something similar to what you see right here. Or at least that's what's expected from computer simulations. But because radio astronomy, and specifically radio interferometry, is so extremely difficult to analyze, it might take a while, possibly decades, before we get an actual image that reflects all of this just a little bit better. But still, the claim from the researchers is that all of this rounding and all of this circular appearance is really just a statistical artifact, possibly resulting from errors. And that's maybe something that needs to be addressed sometimes in the future. Mostly because I even put this image on one of the t-shirts. And I still have that t-shirt in my closet and sometimes wear it outside. If you want to buy one, there's a link in the description. That was a nice segue. But anyway, the point here is that by reanalyzing the same data and filling the gaps in a different way, we do actually end up with a different image. Which means that the story of the image of the central black hole is far from over. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this just to see what researchers come up with in the next few years, and I'm sure we'll get even better images within just the next few months. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos, including the one about the other black hole in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, and one of them has that black hole in one of the links in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.